guys! This video is about delayed onset muscle soreness, also commonly known as DOMS. I'm going to look at what causes DOMS, can you prevent it from happening, and then also what modalities may be useful to prevent you from getting dom DOMS. Um, good, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the link to um, the link to our website is in the description of this video. Okay, so what is DOMS? I often get um, people asking me on, on social media, oh, I've had a massage and now I've got terrible DOMS, what can I do for it? That's not DOMS. So DOMS is delayed muscle, delayed onset muscle soreness that you get after exercise. And usually exercise that you're not used to, so you've done a lot more than what you used to, and exercise with an eccentric component. I'll explain that in a minute. So you can't get DOMS from massage and stuff like that. If, you're getting dom if you've got soreness from massage, that's just because you've been bruised. That's not delayed, muscles, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness as in from exercise. Okay, so why does it happen? Nobody really knows. There are a few theories, but because it's a subtle um, changes that happens in the muscles and stuff, there's nothing big to witness. They're not entirely sure what causes that pain and the loss of function when you get DOMS. So typically, you'll do an exercise session that usually involves eccentric movements. That's where you get a lengthening of the muscle fibers as you do the exercise. So if we think of it, it's the slow lowering and a squat movement. It's um, anything that's a jumping or hopping type movement. It's if, for instance, you're doing calf raises, it'll be when you go up. It'll be that slow component down where the calf muscle lengthens. Downhill running. Um, yes, that's, a, that's quite a big one for runners um, that gives you DOMS as if there's a lot of downhill running. So that type of exercise brings it on. It doesn't start immediately. It only starts to develop after 24 hours and then it usually builds and it's usually at its worst after about two, three days. And it can last for five to seven days, the research says. To be honest, I think when I've run races in the past that I wasn't prepared for properly, I think I may have had DOMS for about uh, proper 10 days. So it, it can depend on how much you overloaded your tissue with that. So, of course, the fitter you are, the more used you are to exercise and stuff, the less likely you are to get DOMS. The less fit you are, the less exercise you have to do to get DOMS. So... <laughs> I had, um, when I used to work in the physio practice in Eastbourne, it was in the sports science department of University of Brighton. And I mean, the sports science department is packed full of really fit people who love sports. And I remember one of the lecturers once, I said to him, oh, my legs are killing me. And he went, how can you have DOMS? That was just running nearly on the flat. There's no eccentric in there. But I was just so unfit at that point that the little bit of eccentric exercise in that activity was enough to give me DOMS. Um, so why does it develop? They think it's a combination of both muscle damage as well as fascia damage. So fascia is the stuff that keeps your body together. So it's around every muscle fiber. It bounds bundles of muscle fibers together and then it also covers the muscles. It's that white sinewy stuff and meat that's really tough. The same stuff, kind of the same stuff that ligaments and tendons are made of, just slightly different structure. Um, so what you experience with it is, so remember, all exercise causes microtrauma and that microtrauma repairs and rebuilds and then you're stronger for the next bout of exercise. But with DOMS, the thinking is that that microtrauma may be significant trauma, that it actually then causes pain. And when you look at it under, um, when they do biopsies and stuff, they, they notice that there's swelling because you, when you measure the limb, it's also um, wider. Um, there are signs of muscle damage there's when they do blood tests or urine tests they can they can test that there is um, damage to the fascia there's damage to the muscles um, but they can't see anything specific um, that big or I just don't think they, they know how to test for it yet so essentially think of it as micro damage that's gone macro that it's a little bit more damage than what you would normally want from an exercise bout um, Initially, people used to think it's down to lactic acid, but we now know that it definitely isn't because lactic acid um, that forms in the muscles when you exercise is cleared within an hour. 
So it doesn't matter what you do, even if you just sit on the couch after exercise, within one hour, all the lactic acid that's built up in your muscles have gone. So that theory has been disproven, but there are several others that's still going around. And personally, I think it's a little bit of everything. That's why we're not getting one specific thing standing out. I think it's a little bit of damage of fascia, a little bit of damage of muscle, depending on what you did. Um, and then it irritates the nerve endings. That's my theory, but it's basically what the research is saying as well. Um, okay, that's about how you get it. So DOMS is only DOMS if you've done exercise and it's come on 24 hours after and it's built in intensity over the next 48 hours. If you stop exercise and it's already, you've got pain or discomfort after a few minutes or an hour or so, that's very likely an injury that's building. Or if you've had a massage or something and then you've got pain, that's more bruising, not DOMS. Now, what works to prevent DOMS? So one very, I'll, I'm just going to cover the main things here that people think may work for DOMS. So one of the first things that people think, and that's still widely used, is ice baths. So they'll do exercise and they'll get an ice bath. And you see it a lot for um, high level athletes. They get in that ice bath. Research is showing that it really doesn't help for DOMS. It doesn't make one bit of difference for that. In fact, you need to be careful of ice baths because if you're trying to get a training stimulus and build your muscles and stuff, there's quite good evidence that if you get into that ice bath within that hour or so after you've done your exercise, um, you may actually prevent your body from adapting to that exercise. And it's because it decreases the blood circulation to the injured parts, it decreases the inflammatory response. And remember, you've got micro damage, you need that micro damage to repair to be stronger. Inflammation is a really important part of that repair system. So if you switch that off, you're not getting the repair, so you're not gain, you don't gain anything from it. You end up with sore muscles because the ice doesn't work for the DOMS either but you don't get the benefit from it. So my advice with regards to cold immersion is, I probably wouldn't waste my time on that and definitely not shortly after you've exercised um, because you may actually mitigate the, the progress that you want or the changes. Then compression garments is the next one that people tend to use for recovery. And there is actually some evidence that compression may decrease the intensity of DOMS. Um, they're not entirely sure why yet, but there is evidence that compression garments can help with um, lymph drainage. So getting, um, which and lymph is the way that you get all the um, chemicals and things that build up due to the damage in the muscles and stuff to be taken away more quickly. So it may help that recovery process. It may also be the physical pressure there because we know that um, low level pressure, like with massage and with um, just holding stuff and putting a bit of compression around it can desensitize um, areas that, that feels painful. So that may be a component there. But yep, if you've got compression garments to wear, definitely worth a go. Um, what I will say there is from the research about compression garments is it has to be quite, it's got to be firm, comfortably firm, too tight and you get the opposite effect, too loose and you don't really get the effect. So I would always go for reputable brands with that because they do put a lot of research into how they make their um, garments. Then massage. This is an instance where I would say massage can be a useful. Um, you may have looked at some of my other videos where I go massage doesn't work for this. Massage doesn't work for that. I'm not against massage because massage is an extremely useful thing if you use it for the right things. And the research is supporting massage in all the meta-analysis and stuff that I've been reading in the last 10 years, it always comes out that massage is a useful adjunct for recovery and that it can decrease DOMS. So it doesn't, so remember with DOMS, you get a decrease in function. So the muscle can't contract so well. There's a bit of swelling in there and you've got the pain aspect. Massage doesn't help to restore your function more quickly. So you can't jump better or anything within a few hours or a few days if you have massage versus if you don't but it definitely decreases the pain. And when we have pain, we don't function that well. So it's always useful to decrease pain, even if it doesn't give you a natural increase in function then. Um, okay, so foam rolling, same thing for foam rolling. Again, it's been shown to help decrease the pain of DOMS. So if you do foam rolling after you've done um, exercise that will induce DOMS, you don't have as much DOMS in the days after. 
why this massage and foam rolling work so well? So you've got to remember how massage works. So neither of those helps with the swelling that you see in DOMS. Neither of those helps with restoring the function more quickly, but it helps for pain. And one of the main ways that massage and foam rolling works is that mechanical pressure on a painful area switches off those pain receptors. So remember, you don't really have receptors that's just there for pain. You've got receptors that feeds back information to your brain about how much pressure is in the area, how what chemicals is in that area, stretch, um, compression, things like that. And it's only when those um, signals goes above a certain threshold that the brain goes, hmm, I think that's now dangerous for my body. I'm going to start creating pain as a warning signal for you to act. When you have an injury, even if it's microtrauma or stuff, those receptors that feeds back about pain, uh, about pressure, chemicals, blah, 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 becomes more sensitive and they become better at creating those signals that triggers the brain to think, oh, that's a dangerous level. We've got to create pain. So what mechanical pressure do, does when you press on an area and you hold it or you do massage and stuff, you desensitize those pressure sensitive um, receptors. And that's why massage is such a potent painkiller. It doesn't necessarily cure an injury, but it's a really good way to decrease pain in that area. And of course, often it's a temporary thing. A few hours later, you may have pain again, or next day you may have pain again because you haven't fixed the injury yet. But if pain is a big part of why you can't do your exercises, or for some conditions, muscles just go get, become overactive and they are the reason you've got pain, then massage can be a really useful thing to do. And for DOMS, both massage and foam rolling seems to be working. Um, stretching, so <laughs> it's funny how people put themselves through a guilt trip when they get injured or when, they, um, when things go wrong. So I'll often have patients say, oh, I'm really bad, I never stretch after exercise and now I've got this injury. But they forget that they haven't stretched after exercise for the last 20 years. So the fact that they've now got the injury is likely not because they've not been stretching for the last 20 years. And with regards to DOMS, what the research is showing is it really doesn't matter. You can stretch until the cows come home. It doesn't help to decrease either the pain with DOMS and it doesn't bring back your function more quickly. If stretching makes you feel more comfortable because your muscles feel tight and you feel more flexible and that you can move better afterwards, by all means go for it. It's just that it doesn't help for the pain or anything that you feel with DOMS specifically. So I'm not saying don't stretch um, if you feel stiff or you feel uncomfortable. If it makes you feel better, do stretch, definitely. It's not a black or white thing, it's just that it doesn't help for, um, for pain. Then the last one, on the list is NSAIDs or anti-inflammatory, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And I left it for last because it's really important. Um, there's a big mindset that whenever somebody feels pain, either from an injury or from DOMS or something, that they want to swallow some tablets because the quicker they can get the pain to go down and the quicker they can get the inflammation to go down, the more quickly they will recover. And I'm not entirely sure how we demonized inflammation. Um, but I mean, I grew up knowing that inflammation is a bad thing and, oh, that looks red inflamed. We need to get that inflammation down. But we need to change our mindset. We need to understand that that redness that you see there, when you, especially with a wound that you've got, that you've cut yourself and you see a bit of red there, that's a really important part of the healing process. That's your body getting rid of all the stuff that shouldn't be there. So same thing goes for DOMS. If you've got microtrauma, there are damaged cells that needs to be absorbed. Guess who does that? Inflammatory cells. There are chemicals and things that needs to be removed. There are, if it's an open wound, I know I'm regressing or going off now, but if you've got an injury where there's an open wound or you've torn a muscle or something like that, there may be stuff um, from outside that needs to be killed off so that um, it can be healthy tissue again. So excessive inflammation in wounds and things isn't good, but normal inflammation that you get as part of the healing process and as part of DOMS is good and it's needed. It's how you recover. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Voltaren, naproxen, any of those should not be taken because you're messing with your healing response. And there's research to show that if you take anti-inflammatories within that 
first three to five days of a muscle injury, for instance, that muscle injury may not heal as strongly as if you didn't do it because it's that first five, three to five days where the inflammatory process needs to be taking, um, taking place. Same things for tendons. What's been shown is if you take anti-inflammatory drugs and you're doing strength training and things to strengthen your tendons, you don't get the same response from it. So your adaptation to the exercise isn't as good. So that means you're actually wasting your time a little bit because you're doing all the strength training to strengthen your tendon but now you're taking anti-inflammatories, so you're not getting the repair of the microtrauma um, that you cause through the exercise, so you're not getting stronger. So my advice with regards to ibuprofen, um, any non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is for sports injuries, stay away from it, unless it's the only option there and there's a clear reason why you're taking it, not just because you've got pain, okay? There are other things that you can take that you can chat with your GP about that's not that, that may decrease pain if you feel the pain is overwhelming. Um, okay, that's basically it about DOMS. So let me know if you've got any questions. If you need more help with your injury, you're welcome to consult one of us via video call. The link to our website is in the description of this video. Take care.